Lads, 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 welcome to a brand new video on the channel. I'm in good nick. And yesterday, we beat Crystal Palace 1-0 away at Sellers Park. And uh, yeah, I'm absolutely buzzing. In my last video, in my preview, I said I thought it was going to finish one all, which again, uh, probably been a little bit negative because we are winning lots of games away from home at the moment. Um, yeah, we were... It was one of them games where just the result mattered. Didn't really matter about how we played. I thought we were a lot better in the second half. But uh, yeah, in the first half, we didn't have one shot. We played okay-ish. We gave the ball away quite a lot. Um, they had a lot of, um, well, a lot of, a lot of like kind of breakaway attacks where we just gave the ball away. Um, but they didn't really create too much. Um, and they didn't have too many good chances. I think I rem all I remember really was Ben Teke having a shot from uh, from an acute angle and putting it into the uh, the side netting. Um, yeah, Henderson had it covered. He had his hand at his front post. He was like, nope, this is not going in the back of the net unless it is hit at 100 miles an hour above my hand, which it never was going to be with Ben Teke, was it? Um, so yeah, like I said, uh, it, it wasn't the greatest of first halves. It was nice to see uh, the new lad, uh, Sander Berger, Sander Berg, Sander Berg, Sander Berger, whatever you want to call him. It was great to see him start. Um, in my preview, I didn't think he was going to start. I did say that I thought Besic was going to start again. Uh, but yeah, you don't pay £22 million for a for a player just to leave him on the bench. And it is good to get him up to speed because he was a little bit slow from the off. Um, I think that was just probably the pace of the Belgian league compared with the pace of the Premier League. Uh, he'll get used to it. He's fine. He looks a, he looks a really good player. Um, so, yeah, I think it'll take him two, three, four weeks maybe to get to full speed. And then, uh, yeah, he'll, he'll go on from there. Um, so, yeah, I thought he played all right. Um, he... The stat was he won five challenges out of five, which I think they was just looking for a stat that he'd done really well in. Uh, he gave the ball away a couple of times, but again, that that happened. That that's going to happen anyway. But it comes with kind of um, a bit of experience in this league. It's a it is a very fast league. Even if he'd have gone straight into the championship, I think that the championship would probably be quicker than the Belgian league as well. I've seen a lot of videos of him picking the ball up from the defence and just driving with it, running through teams, and it's like, you're not going to do that in the Premier League. He may do that in a few weeks, a few months, a, a year or two, but uh, right now, as soon as you pick that ball up, someone's going to be on you, especially that everyone now knows he's a £22 million player. So uh, they're, they're going to want to stop him. They're going to not want to give him too much space. Um, so, yeah, I thought Sander Berger played well. He obviously came off towards the end for Lundstrom. Um, yeah, it's it's a difficult league. It's a really, really fast league. Um, so, in regards to how everybody played, I'm not going to bang on and bang on and bang on about this uh, this game because everybody knows what happened. We weren't, we weren't that good, uh, but we ground out that result, which was brilliant to see. Um, so, Henderson, first of all, excellent yet again. Um... Yeah, couldn't really, couldn't really say anything bad about him at all. We don't, I don't want to, but I'm just trying to think of anything that he did that wasn't perfect. And no, the the shot from Benteke earlier on, he kind of, uh, he had it covered. Uh, there was a shot from Benteke in the second half, which bobbled along the ground, and it was quite comfortable for him. And then there was a a good save from uh, I think it was is it James MacArthur. Um, yeah, James McCarthy. It looked like from where I was, uh, where I was sitting, that it was going to be destined for the corner. Uh, but yeah, Henderson kind of. The the thing was, it wasn't an amazing save because it was quite comfortable. Well, what I will say about what Henderson did well, uh, he he made sure he could see the ball really well. There's a lot of goalkeepers in that in that uh, situation where there's uh, three, four, five players maybe stood in front of him. What he did, he made sure he could see the line of the ball when the ball came in so he could save it. If he was struggling, if he was struggling to see it, it'd have been like this and then he may have gone the wrong way or he may have kind of overcompensated and gone, right, it's going to go that way and just set off early. But nope, he watched the ball, he waited for him to make contact with the ball and it was like, yep, yeah, that's an easy save. Um, so yeah, Henderson, excellent yet again, nine clean sheets. Brilliant. That's uh, that's joint with um, Alisson, Liverpool's goalkeeper at the top. So, 
yeah, he's in great company. Uh, then we've got uh, Baldock. Baldock was absolutely incredible in this game. And I'm not saying the first 15 minutes was a bit shady, but he was trying to stop, stop Zaha, and it's so difficult to stop Zaha. He's such a well, he's such a good player. He's an excellent player. And yeah, I know he gets Marde, and uh, he tends to kind of, when he gets Marde, uh, I lose focus. And I think that was Bald what Baldock was trying to do. He was trying to hold him back, trying to drag him back, trying to stop him. Stopping whatever he had to do to stop him. One, so that we didn't, they didn't score. Or two, uh, to, to kind of rile him up a little bit. Uh, I can't remember who it was now. Um, it was in the second half, I believe. When Zaha were running and someone just... Oh, Fleck. Fleck just clipped his feet. And he ran up to him and he's, up, he's doing all this. And Fleck was just like, get on with game, mate. Like, I did it to stop you. It, it's tactical foul. It's what people do in this game. Um, and then he kind of just didn't do well. Um, so, but no, he, he, I don't think he got too riled up in this game. He just kept going and going at Bulldog. And the thing was, Bulldog got booked so early on as well. See if I can see what minute. No, don't tell me. Bulldog got booked so early on. And I was like, maybe we need to take him off. The problem is we didn't have Kieran Freeman on the bench. Um, I honestly thought we should have took him off. Um, but Wilder knows best and Bulldog... Kind of knows best, but saying that, he could have easily got sent off. He flew in on a challenge on uh, on Zaha. Uh, he, he he missed him and then kind of caught him a little bit, but that could have easily been a booking and, and a second booking. I think the referee bottled it, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, but we're happy because he didn't get sent off. If he'd have got sent off, it would have been a completely different game. We'd have literally been sat back and just tried to hit him on the break. Um, so that was Baldock. But in the second half, Baldock was excellent. And in the first and in the first half, after that initial shady sort of tackle that he did that could have been a second booking, Baldock kind of chilled out a little bit. I think he thought, yeah, I better not do that again. Um, then we've got Ender Stevens, who uh, had, yeah, a steady game, got forward quite a lot, got into some good areas. But he had he had one shot that was on his right foot and he went to two peg it across the goalkeeper's body. And it, he's a great goalkeeper. I'm going to get on to, uh, to the obvious in a moment. But he's a really good goalkeeper. I think he tried to catch him out. But the thing is, Ender Stevens does not have a right foot. That is a little bit of a problem. But he's certainly got a left foot. So it was one of them things. It was a good save. Uh, he had another one at the back post, which he, he tried to volley and uh, just put it wide. Uh, but no, overall, had a good game. Basham obviously came off. Well, not came off. Basham got... Injured, strapped. Uh, someone strapped his head up, and he looked like uh, he got a do rag on his head or something like that. Um, but uh, but yeah, battling as always, Bash, battling Bash. Um, yeah, he's never going to come off for an head injury, is he, Bash? He's uh, daft as a brush, and he's just hard as nails. Top man, Egan, excellent as always. I can't remember the last time Egan had a bad game. Uh, he's just brilliant, brilliant in the air. Stops everything, blocks everything. What a player, Jack O'Connell. Up and down, getting blocks in, get his, getting headers in. Uh, they blocked and cleared so many balls uh, in this match. Those three, excellent yet again. Um, then we will move on to Berger. Like I've, I think I've just kind of covered what he did. Uh, lost the ball a couple of times, but you're going to have that when you're brand new to a league. He looked good on the ball. He looked very confident on the ball. So like, even if someone takes it off him, he's not going to lose that confidence and just be like, uh, pass it straight away. Because that's what Lundstrom kind of used to do. Lundstrom used to get a bit scared on the ball um, in the championship. Um, and um, we don't want him to get scared on the ball. We want him to pick the ball up and have the confidence to just kind of look around, know know what's around him, um, and then carry the ball, uh, pass the ball when you need to. Uh, but yeah, like I said, he, he, he had a good game. He did. He was getting forward. Uh, he didn't... I thought he played more of a defensive role, but he didn't. He played kind of more attacking. Uh, not attacking, but it was up and down. He was box to box. Uh, I did notice in the first half he seemed flagging a little bit, not getting back as quickly as what kind of Lundstrom would do. But again, it's all with experience and time. Uh, Fleck uh, was brilliant. Yeah, again, driving us forward, winning those tackles. Um, like I said earlier on, Nord and Fleck lost the ball a few times early on in the first half, uh, which is not like them. 
Uh, but other than that, I thought they were great. Norwood and Fleck getting stuck in yet again. For such small guys, they, they put themselves about, they get stuck in. They um, I'll tell you what, Norwood has really impressed me this season with how many balls he actually cuts out. Uh, if you watch Norwood, you will see how much he actually does defensively. You always think of Norwood as this guy that plays, sprays these beautiful balls, uh, puts these amazing crosses in and, and has some good shots. Um, but his defensive work is good also. Slides in when he needs to try and win the, that ball. But he, uh, he cuts out quite a lot of those passes. Uh, and he had a, I had the free kick in the second half that the keeper pulled off a good save. It wasn't quite in the top corner. If it would have been, I don't think the keeper would have got there. But it was quite a good height for the keeper to tip over. But it was a good effort. It was a really good effort. Um, and then finally, McBurney and Sharp. I'm going to be honest. I thought Sharp in the first half was excellent. Put himself about winning those free kicks. Holding the ball up. I don't remember McBurney doing that much. Um, if I'm honest, I saw he put a tweet out and just says, oh, I've never been so tired. I don't think McBurney was anywhere near as good as he was at Man City. Uh, I'm not saying he was bad. I'm just saying that I don't remember him putting, him, putting himself about as much as what he said he did. So, yeah, um, like I said, I can't really remember much from McBurney. Uh, he got involved when he, when he could. He linked up play a little bit. Um... Yeah, that's about it. I thought I thought Sharp was a, a hell of a lot better. Uh, Mousse, when he came on, um, was a handful, really was, and he's not just one of these speed demons, uh, Mousse. He he's got such quick feet, and and at one point I saw a tweet go out. Uh, it's like the Iniesta um, picture where there's like five or six players around him trying to stop him, and that's what Mousse was like. Uh, at one point he had four or five Crystal Palace players around him and it were like just trying to get ball off him and his feet just going bring it ball back, doing this, doing that, doing other and uh, yeah they struggled, really struggled to get it off him but uh, yeah he's um, he looked a bit more threatening than he has done in the last couple of times when he's been on um, so hopefully that's Moussa getting a bit of fitness back um, obviously Lundstrom came on after that for uh, Berger I'm going to have to carry on calling him Berger because when you look at its name, it's like uh, Berg, Burge, but it's Burger, apparently. So, um, so yeah, I thought Lundstrom was brilliant when he came on, got stuck in, um, held on to the ball well. My only criticism, not of Lundstrom, but of the whole team was, in the kind of last five minutes of the game, we were kind of uh, just booting the ball anywhere. And I know I know we, we ended up winning the game, but sometimes it's like, just have a quick think. What what is the best pl Where's the best place to put this? Putting it out of play is that the best thing to do? Uh, it's it as far as you can. Is that the best thing to do? Waiting to see if a player is going to make a run. So because the thing is, you can whack the ball as far as you can, but if that's going to come straight back to you, then what's the point in doing that? Um, unless that's all you have to do. But if if the, if Musa or or Lundstrom or someone like that is making a bit of a run. How about holding on to it a little bit more and then just trying to clip it in that direction because they're not just going to pick that ball up and lump it back in the box. We're going to be putting pressure on them. So sometimes right at the end of the game, we just need to kind of use a bit of that. But they were they were excellent um, in that second half. I think Wilder probably gave them a kick up the backside because we were quite poor in the first half. Uh, we were giving the ball away too easy. We were letting them come on to us. The defence was excellent all game. I'm not going to say anything bad about the defence. I think it was just kind of Fleck, and, Fleck Ber, uh, Berger and Norwood just kind of losing it a little bit uh, too easily, like uh, stray passes. Anyway, that's about it. Um, we'll, we'll talk about the goalkeeper's uh, mistake just quickly. Uh, it was completely out of character because I was saying in my preview how well he's done this season and last season. Gwite is such a good goalkeeper. Um, and um, yeah, he proved it in that second half with some of the saves that he made. But yeah, he weren't ever making up for that horror show of a drop. It just happens, doesn't it? Happens to De Gea, happens to Henderson, happens to all good goalkeepers. It really does. Tom Pope um, has, has made an error or two this season. Happens to all good goalkeepers. Um, he, uh, I think it, I think the wind took it. Like Norwood were obviously trying to curl it underneath the crossbar, which... I, I were a bit surprised that because 
Uh, fair enough, we got the goal from it, but a lot of Norwood's crosses were going straight into the goalkeeper's hands, and, and nine times out of ten, the keeper would have taken that with, with ease. But I think the wind helped um, with him whipping those crosses in because he just whipped it in a little bit too much, uh, a little bit more than what um, what I think he was expecting. So I think the keeper was expecting there, and then when it's coming across, he's coming across like that, and he's going underneath his crossbar, and then he's obviously just dropped it, which. It's one of them things. Like I feel a bit sorry for him, but at the same time, no, I don't because we've <laughs> we've won the game because of it. Um, so yeah, that's that's taken us to fifth in the Premier League. Fifth. Wait a second. Man City beat Tottenham. We stay fifth. Let's have a quick look because at the moment, as I'm recording this, uh, it was nil nil. Uh, let me have a quick look. Not that you guys care, because when I've put this out, it'll probably be over. Half-time, nil-nil. So, currently, we are still fifth. So, Spurs would have to be uh, Man City, which is a tall order, but it's it's doable. Um, so, um, so yeah, that's that's uh, that's it, really. We're fifth in the league. Uh, we're on our European tour. Or we're uh, on, on course for our European tour, should I say. Um we are, we're not even level on points with anyone. We are one point in front of Man United in six, one point in front of Spurs, one point in front of Wolves, um, three points in front of ninth, Everton. And let's just have a little look at the bottom three because you know what us Blades are like. 24 points, we're on 36. So we're 12 points in front of the drop. I just want that to be like 20 just so that I'm not worried. And I know it's this, I know we're on 36 points. I know we're only four points away from the Magic 40, but I just get worried. And I think a lot of other Blades get worried. It's like, it's always too good to be true. And look how well we're playing. Like, it feels like it's all going to come grumbling down. But every week that we play, we're, we're grinding these results out. Like, I don't think we played too well. But we grinded the results out. We were so much better in that second half. Um, and yeah, it's just amazing to see. I'm loving life right now. Loving life as a Sheffield United fan. And um, yeah, the the um, kind of uh, what's the word? Um, the ovation, standing of whatever. The uh, what we what we gave Berger was excellent. I still can't remember the word. Um, the cheering, the the claps that. The singing for him, it's like, it's amazing. I know Wilder were like, get off the pitch, get off the pitch to him. But you could see that little bit of, um, a bit of a relationship between the player and the fans. And that's what you want to see. Like, he wasn't the best player on the pitch, but the fact that he, like, all the fans gave him such a good ovation and he came over and he was clapping away and his face, it was just like, he just looks like he loved that first game. And, uh, yeah, we want to just keep that going. We, want, we don't want him to lose heart. We don't want him to be like, what have I done coming to this country, to this team that I've never even heard of, which he probably hadn't until this season. So let's keep that up. Let's keep supporting. But at the same time, don't forget to support the players that have got us here. The play, and I know you're not going to. I know we're not going to stop supporting the lads. But we can't put too much emphasis on Berger because it'd be like Norwood and Fleck and they'd be like, what the hell, we've been doing all this all season and, and he's just come in and, and he's getting all this all the plaudits week in, week out. Let's carry on supporting the lads that got us there. But it was excellent to see um, how much he loved that and how much uh, we love him. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, yeah, we've got, is it Brighton next? I think it is. Is it Brighton? Again, let's have a quick look. Um, I, I'm pretty sure it's Brighton next. Um, or is it? It might not be. Um, it's completely not Brighton next. It's Bournemouth next and then it's Brighton. Just me being daft. I think there's a uh, there's a break, uh, uh, international break in between that. But we've got Bournemouth at home. Then we've got Brighton at home. Then we've got Norwich at home. Which, if we can get nine points from that... I'd, I'd nearly stick my neck out and say we've got a very good chance of getting Europe. I'm being completely honest. They're three very, very winnable games at home. I'm not saying we're going to win all three because Brighton have been great this season. Bournemouth have been poor this season, but they've got some really good players. Um, 
Norwich have been poor this season. We can do this. Come on. Let's take nine points from the next three games. Come on, you red and white wizards. Right, okay, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, yeah, if you haven't subscribed already, please make sure you do so. And if you enjoyed the video, smash a like on it. And stay in good nick. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. And if my content is something that you might like to see more of in the future, hit the subscribe button with notifications turned on. Oh, yeah. And stay in good nick.